the integral test. If we have a series and it's not geometric or it's not telescoping, it's often difficult or sometimes impossible to find an explicit formula for the partial sums or an exact value of a convergent sequence. But we want to ask ourselves a question, does it converge? And once we've answered that, if we answer no, we're done. If we answer yes, then we may want to find an estimated value. Now sometimes we just will simply be happy with the fact that it converges and we won't be able to find an estimated value. But let's consider how we might go about doing this. If we have the series 1 over n squared here and we see what it's doing, we could look at the partial sums and as we look at these partial sums to see if they look like they're approaching a finite value, they appear to be approaching about 1 and 2 thirds or 1.6 so now let's have a closer look and see what we can maybe do to determine if that is the case. Well, let's look at a function that has these as its integer values. So that would be the function 1 over x squared. And let's go ahead and make some rectangles. We could make a rectangle that is one wide and it is high as this function value. And so that area would be one over one squared or one. We could continue to do that. This one would be one wide and one over two squared high. And this one would be one wide and one over three squared high and so forth. Now, as we look at these rectangles, now what if we considered integrating right here from this value of 1 to infinity? We know that would be the area under the curve. Well, that area is going to be greater than the sum of these terms here, and these would be all of the terms except the first one here when we're summing this up. And so if this is a finite value, then we know that this is because it would have to be less than this value and then adding on this last rectangle. So let's go ahead and do that integration. We're going to have the limit as b goes to infinity. This is x to the negative 2. So doing the antiderivative 1 over x evaluated from 1 to b. So as we do that we have the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over b plus 1 over 1 and we see as we let b go to infinity that that's going to go to 0 so this integral equals 1. Now then all of this would have to be less than 1 and then if we add on this first term which is just 1 we would have then the 1 plus this would equal 2 and we know that our series sum then would have to be less than that value because we can see that we miscounting these pieces here. So we know it is bounded by 2 and now we have a bounded monotonic sequence if we look at the sequence of partial sums here. So we've shown it's bounded by 2 and so by the bounded monotonic sequence theorem we would know that the sums converge and so therefore we would know that this series is a convergent series. So we're going to have what is called the integral test. Now for this to work, some of what we used where we need to have f be a continuous function and it needs to be positive so we can look at this area under the curve there and it needs to be decreasing. So we need to have those requirements and then for x greater than or equal to 1 we need the terms in the series to equal the integer values of this function and so then we would know that this infinite series and this integral either both converge or both diverge. Now this was with this we were able to get a bound but it didn't mean that they converge to the same thing and in fact it is generally not the case that they converge to the same value but if this converges this converges if this diverges this diverges. So let's look at a proof of this integral test. So we assume that f meets our conditions, continuous positive and decreasing from 1 to infinity, and that these values are equal at the integers. And so now if, let's first of all assume that this integral converges. So we know that the limit as n goes to infinity working this is a finite number. And since each 
term in this series is positive, the sequence of the partial sums is increasing because you're always adding something to it, even if it's a small amount. So let's look at this figure and we can see essentially how that works. So we're going to be summing up rectangles of this decreasing function starting with this second one and then we can add on the area of this first one which will be finite. So here's our area. So we have the partial nth sum here is going to equal the first one here and then all of the rest of these and we can see that that's going to be less than or equal to our integral and then adding on that first term and that would be if we went up to n and that's going to be less than or equal to if we went to infinity so if this converges which is part of our assumption then we now have an upper bound on the partial sums. So the partial sums are bounded and monotonic. The term's decreasing, but when we continue to add positive things, the sum will be increasing. And so therefore it will converge. And so this series is convergent. Now we could look at the other case then for this integral test, and that would be if this diverges. And so if it diverges, it means this integral equals infinity. And so for this particular case, we're going to draw left-hand sum rectangles. We'll have this decreasing function. And then when we sum all of these up, because we did them for these left-hand sides, these are going to be greater than or equal to the values for the continuous function. And so the sum is going to be greater than or equal to this, which is going to infinity. And therefore, this would go to infinity as well. And so therefore, we would have that this these sums, partial sums would diverge. And therefore, this series would diverge. So when we try to use the integral test, it isn't necessary to start that at a 1. We could start it wherever. And so we could integrate here from 4 to infinity, and that would be fine. So our requirements are continuous, positive, and decreasing. And then we could run the integral test. And if the integral converges, then the series converges. If the integral diverges, the series diverges. So let's test this series for convergence or divergence. We're going to see, first of all, can we use the integral test? So we're going to look at the function that has these series terms as its integer values. And first of all, is this a continuous function on this interval from 1 to infinity? And of course, it is. Is it positive? And we can see that it's always positive. Is it decreasing? And so we can see here as x increases that the denominator becomes larger and therefore the fraction becomes smaller. So it meets all of our conditions. So we can run the integral test. We can integrate from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, and then determine if that converges or diverges. And whatever that does will also be true about the series. OK, so as we're looking at this, we have the limit as b goes to infinity. And we recognize this as the inverse tangent. And then we can evaluate that from 1 to b. The limit as b goes to infinity of tangent inverse of b minus tangent inverse of 1. Now, what does tangent inverse do as b goes to infinity? Well, if we think of the graph of inverse tangent, that might be the most useful. And we know that this graph has a horizontal asymptote at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And the graph comes along like this. So as we go to infinity, we approach pi over 2. So this is going to be pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of 1. We know that's pi over 4. So this integral is pi over 4. That's a finite value. This integral converges. And therefore, this series also converges.